Not so big, thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming and enjoying uh, Lauren Arden's special day. It's been a beautiful day. Uh, I'd, I hope you all uh, raise a glass to Lauren and Adam. <laughs> Over and out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. First of all, <laughs> I would like to say. That's it. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who has come here today to celebrate Lauren's special day. Um, I'm shaking. Um, if you're here today, it's because you all mean something special to me and Lauren. And definitely not because of the money and gifts we all expect of you. Um, I'd like to say a thank you to Joe and Hayes, Lauren's mum and dad, for accepting me into the family. I think you have, haven't you? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> and I appreciate everything you've done for the wedding and everything with Everly and me and Lauren towards this. Um, just looking on my phone, I'm not texting or anything, I've just <laughs> wrote some notes on it. Um, right. To my mum and dad, thank you for everything you have done, not just for the wedding, but in all of my life. I'm going to start crying. <laughs> um, you both, believe it or not, have showed me how to be a man and how to do the right thing and to be a good person. I love how you brought me up and I have never said or told you both before, but you've done an amazing job as parents and I wouldn't change it for anything. So mum and dad, I love you and thank you for everything. <laughs> um, the best man, Sergio, slash his partner. Um, I have known you all my life, really. We have done some silly shit together over the years, some that bad, I don't think some people would believe. And I might be a little worried about what you're about to say. <laughs> Where is he? I can't even, where's Serge? Oh, there, all right, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, let me, so a big thank, so a big thank you to your Mrs. Emily and my wife who sorted out this, the stag night because without them, we definitely wouldn't have had one. So can I have a round of applause for them too for sorting that out, please? Me and you are just too laid back. I don't know what we'll do without them. So thanks for being my best man anyway. So. <laughs> the bridesmaids, you all look lovely. It's funny what a little bit of makeup can do, innit? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Lauren. Um. <laughs> oh dear. Um, you all are very special to Lauren, so anyone who is special to Lauren is special to me. A big thank you to Beth for making the best wedding cake. It looks amazing. Are you there? You don't need telling, but you are an amazing sister and a best friend to Lauren. The amount of times that she has needed you and you stepped up every time. I see what it means to Lauren, so thank you very much. To Everly, the best, the best door you could ask for. Fuck's sake, man. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking what a melt. <laughs> <sighs> oh. I would like to say thank you for always wanting to help mummy do, do a wedding crafts and always wanting to help. Please don't ever change. You are so kind and caring and funny. I'm really proud of you, and we appreciate the crab you did doing in the rehearsal in front of the dean. <laughs> 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 
Uh, last but not least, Mrs. Wilco, as everybody would say. First thing, sir, so I'd like to say, th say, Lauren, you look absolutely stunning. You have done absolutely everything for this wedding. All I have done is fetch some stone out of the skip at work for the name tables. <laughs> that's no joke either, that's all I've done. Uh, while, she has been, while she has been slaving away night after night while doing 14 hour shifts with a busy time at work, looking after me and Everly, I don't know how you do it, and I've, and I've put this, I think that deserves a clap, so. <laughs> Loz, I knew you was the one from early on. I remember our first date in the Five Bells in Basingham, and I remember thinking, fuck me, she can eat a lot. <laughs> it came to me to say it. And I put joking, obviously. Um, I remember sitting down with you and talking non-stop. There, was, there wasn't any silence or awkwardness. We just sat there and talked for hours. I didn't want the date to end. I think we broke the silence and nerves for me was to drive there when I killed a pigeon on the way. <laughs> <laughs> and after hearing your amazing laugh, if anyone has heard Lauren's laugh, it's a very special one. And it's, it is, it's an amazing laugh and it seemed to make the conversation that night flow. Whew. But none of this would have happened if you didn't add me on Facebook seven and a half years ago. And I was reading our very first conversation we said to each other and it went like this. So, you added me and I put, hello, you look familiar. Was it just a random ad? Um, yes, it was. I hope you don't mind. And I played it cool and just put, no worries. Um, then, then you put, well, I thought he looks like he can handle a good bit of stone. Must be worth an ad. <laughs> so I put, you're calling yourself a good bit of stone. <laughs> um, ha, and I put, ha ha. Ma <laughs> might, might be, I wouldn't say stone. I'd go, go a nice slab of marble. That's what you called yourself. <laughs> and then I put, for some reason, you're nowhere near a slab of marble. More like a chunk of granite. And I honestly read this so many times after and didn't realise how rude it comes across, so I'm so sorry for saying that. Um, so, Lauren, my wife, thank you for saying yes. Thank you for not running away after me calling you a chunk of granite. Thank you for being a brilliant mum. Thank, thank you for putting up with me acting like a child 99% of the time. And, Lauren, between me and you, I would... I would live this life a thousand times over if I knew I could spend it with you. And I too wish I had met you sooner so I could have loved you longer. You really are the best. To Lauren. Who was this next? Um. If you can't see me, you stand on a chair. I'm very, very small, by the way. Um, I haven't done it like Hayes, but I wish I did it like you, because you kept it short and sweet. So, Adam, I've got fucking so much to live up to now with this, haven't I? Right, I've got on a bit of paper, so... Hello, everybody. I am Sergio. I am the best man. Um, uh, I just want to start by congratulating Lauren and Adam on their marriage. It's been a fantastic day and I all can agree with the venue and how everything's run. It's been absolutely amazing. Uh, uh, the bridesmaids and Lauren, bloody hell, Lauren, when you're coming down the aisle, I even got goosebumps. Jesus, I was looking at Adam and goes, tell me when she's coming, tell me when she's coming. And I looked round and I was like, mate, she, I said, she's coming. I had goosebumps, honestly. You look, you look mint, honestly. Bridesmaids as well, you look absolutely fan... Well, beautiful, actually. It's, ri it's written down on here, actually. So. Um, groomsmen, 
He did a, a sterling job, very sterling job. Uh, not as good as me, but very good sterling job. Right. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut to it now because uh, I've got a couple of pages here. It's in big font, so uh, take me a while. Right. Growing up with Adam, I've known Adam since we we're about five years old, wasn't it? So I moved to Highcombe. And I remember going to school and walking across the road and I think Joe was taking Adam to school and Mama was taking me to school. And uh, he didn't get, didn't get run over that day and he was like, all right. I was like, all right. And we made friends just going to the spa. And uh, like, look at it, they sat us down right next to each other on the first day of school. So that's how really weird life turns out. And uh, yeah, been mates since, since then. Right. Yeah, right, so anyway. Adam's always been daring. Like, when we was growing up, he was in her, but he's not, you he might not know it now, but before, like, he always used to kick the football the hardest, he used to climb the highest trees, he used to do, like, throw the first stone. Like, there's many cars that he hit with a stone. Uh, trust me, he's absolutely he's such a weirdo, it's unbelievable. <laughs> so, we went to one of our friend's house who lived down the street um, and we were throwing stones, uh, not stones, um, apples out a window because we thought it was a fun game. Adam <laughs> picked up a stone and he goes, do you dare me to throw this stone? And I went, yeah, all right. And he threw this stone and he hit it and smashed the window and obviously we ran off like a pair of good ones and uh, did one. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, where am I going? I've lost where I am. Yeah, going up to school, Adam was always been best mate, so he always, he's, that's why he's always been a bit of a grafter. He always used to start his paper round really early in the morning and then come round ours, give us a knock, see if I was biking to school. And uh, we always used to bike to school, and some days Adam's bike would have a flatty and he'd give me a back heat all the way to NK. And I think as a 13 year old, 12 year old, I thought, bloody hell, that's some good going. Like, looking back now, I thought it was bloody good going. <laughs> so, so Adam always thought he'd go one better, and uh, when there was three of us going to school, he thought, I can get one on the front, <laughs> I'll pedal, and one on the back. And Adam pedaled us all the way to school, <laughs> free on a bike. So if you ever saw a weirdo's on, on Highcomb Road, that was definitely us. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, I'm not reading it in order because I'm getting a bit, a bit flustered, but anyway. Joe, I don't know if you knew that Adam used to pinch from the spa. <laughs> no? Well, he did. <laughs> we always used to go, when he used to call for us, we used to go to the park, and Adam always just go, do you want any sweets? And I go, yeah, I'd love some sweets. And he always go in the spa, come out, with loads of rollos and loads of stuff, honestly. He should rob you blind. So he probably owes you a lot. And Paul, did you know Adam used to nick your pornos? <laughs> well, if you ever thought they went missing, they weren't. They didn't get lost. Adam nicked them. <laughs> and Adam would have made a very good paint and decorator back in the day because on a rainy day, we ripped up one of your pornos, page by page, and we plastered it, well, wallpapered, wallpapered a seesaw. <laughs> and I'm not joking, it would have been, it's, you'd have been so proud. You know, honestly. <laughs> There was no bubbles, no, you couldn't see the joins. It was, honestly, it was amazing. But he was very good, he was very good at it. Anyway, well, well, apart from that, anyway, it's never been always gravy between me and Adam. We have fallen out once. Um, and I'll stand up in the middle of this room and I always say, Adam, I didn't break your glasses, it was Carl Gendel. <laughs> Right, so I caught the chorus. So we were having a little wrestle in my front uh, living room, and Adam thought I broke his glasses, <laughs> which I didn't. And he goes, and there was two of us. There's another lad called Carl Gendel, who isn't here, 
Why aren't you here? Because he broke your glasses, that's why. And Adam got up and he saw that his glasses were broke and goes, who broke my glasses? Get, did Carl say it? We said, no, it wasn't me. And I said, no, it definitely wasn't me. And then he thought it was me, he punched me. <laughs> so I punched Adam back. And then, well, what happened after that? No, you left in a temper, temper and he smashed a milk bottle on my, on my drive, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. But yeah, that was the only time we fell out. But Joe, well, luckily for Joe, because I think Adam told Paul and Paul said, smack him back. <laughs> Did he? Yeah. yeah, he did. And Joe said no. So Joe got Adam, marched him to my front door, marched me to, out my door, and she gave us the biggest bollocking I've ever received in my life, to be honest. And to be honest, I'm glad she did, because if she didn't, God knows what would have happened. Would we forgive each other? Probably, wouldn't we? We would have done it. We would have done it. But yeah. Um, right, what other things have I got? Yeah. So, growing up, Adam was a bit of a... He's a bit weird. He wasn't... <laughs> he wasn't that... He would... He was always he was daring, but he was daft at the same time. So, if we said, Adam, climb that tree, he would climb the tree. But the thing is, Adam wouldn't just climb to a safe route. He'd climb... The, and I'm not joking. When he did this story that I'm going to tell, Adam climbed a tree, and I'm not joking, it must have been to the top of the ceiling. And me and Luke said to him, what are you doing? And he was hanging off a branch saying, I'm Tarzan, I'm Tarzan. <laughs> the branch snapped and he fell down and hit every branch on the way down. Hit the bottom, we thought he was dead. <laughs> and uh, Adam got up and he goes, oh, I'm winded. And then he got up and he cracked on. But honestly, he's such a weirdo. <laughs> but... Yeah, Adam could always, it was, it was always the athlete. We always think if Adam trained properly, we reckon Adam would have, no doubt would have made a professional footballer. No doubt. I just think he was always the fastest, he's always the strongest, he's always the most daring, he always wanted to take risks. And we think if you trained, well, I know for a fact me and Luke spoke about it so many times, we reckon you could have made it all the way if you're if you dedicated. Yeah. No, if he was dedicated, he's got a brain, he's got a brain, he can use it very well, but if he was dedicated, he'd know how to do it. Definitely, hand on heart. Anyway, so, going on. Adam went to, to college, did a load of things like, what was it, sports, sports, exercise science? Great, that was great. What did you do? <laughs> Fuck all. <laughs> yeah, I know, it was great, wasn't it? It was such a good laugh. <laughs> Then he did bricklaying. Yeah, that was not bad, not bad. And then uh, he worked at Asda. And at one point, I said to Asda, I said to Adam, I says, join the RAF with me. Might as well join the RAF. And Adam goes, now I'm going to be a stonemason. And I thought, mate, don't be a stonemason. He goes, now I'm going to be a stonemason. And I went to see him at a, what was it? It was a stone carving festival. And Adam carved a pumpkin. <laughs> and I tell you now, it was crap. It was rubbish. <laughs> and when he did it, I said, I, do. I, said, I didn't say out to him. I said, that's really, really good. Really good. But I thought, Adam, what the hell are you doing? But who's the idiot now? Adam, I've seen some of Adam's work. And like I say, we've all been there today looking at the cathedral. And it's bloody beautiful, isn't it? And it's absolutely, mate, you found your niche, haven't you? You're, you know what you're going to do for the rest of the day. You can... Bore Lauren for it for the rest of your life. You can bore us a lot. Obviously, we don't see you as much as we used to, but you can bore us a lot whenever you can with it. So, it's all good. Right. Um, don't worry, like, coming to the end of it now, so it's always good. Right. Adam's track, track of women, for me, hasn't been good. You've picked a couple of weirdos, haven't you? You have a couple of weirdos. And... Um, when he said he was going to meet Lawrence, he told us the, the, when he st started texting, we thought, oh, God, here we go, another weirdo. <laughs> and we went out on a night out, and he goes, lads, tonight I want you to meet Lauren. And I was like, OK. And when we all met Lauren, she was what we all wanted for him, to be honest. She was bloody lovely. She was really nice. She was shy at the time, because I think she was a bit nervous, so I thought, Adam's definitely going to wear the trousers in this relationship. <laughs> Not is it? I, mean, I don't. I don't either. I don't either. It doesn't matter. But honestly, mate, you found an absolute diamond. And 
It's like what we've thought before. You've got to go through the shit before you find a diamond and you find one there, mate. It's absolutely bloody brilliant, to be honest. Yeah. And you could start, well, you've got, already got an amazing family, so like, whatever happens now, whatever happens in Dubai, you never know. <laughs> stays in Dubai, but um, I'd like to, everyone to raise a glass to Adam and Lauren and to such a fantastic day. Yeah. Oh, hello. Um, right, so on behalf of my husband and I, I'd like to thank everyone for coming to our special day. We truly appreciate having the opportunity to be around people closest to us and sharing these moments with us. I know it's not traditional for the bride to make a speech, but it wouldn't be my wedding if I didn't articulate my feelings, now would it? Um, as most of you know, I'm quite good with words. It's just that mostly those words are profanities. Adam and I were not allowed to write our own vows. Adam wasn't upset by this, as you can imagine. Um, I did hear him ask Evs if she could help, help him write a speech. <laughs> um, firstly, I would like to start with some thank yous um, to my dad, who helped us with the wedding. Thank you for showing me what hard work is. You helped, me make, you helped make me the person I am from what you've given us as a family all of your life through sheer hard work and resilience. I appreciate everything I have is from a foundation you built for me. I may not be a Hazelhurst by name anymore, but I'll always be one at heart. I love you. Yeah. <clears throat> and to my mum, who looks incredible, literally all of the time. If there's anything that can be said about my mum is that she never fails to look fabulous. I'm always so proud to be with you. Thank you for always reassuring me that he was out there, for wiping away my tears, throwing wine in my hysterically crying broken hard face, <laughs> and always being there for me no matter what. Did you ever think that we would get here? <laughs> no. From those days of Sunday sadness, you have always been there to pick me up from the lowest lows and my cheerleader celebrating the highest highs. I love you. Thank you for always believing I would get my fairy tale. <laughs> and to my Bep, my one in a million sister, the person who I can turn to no matter what, who helps me with the messes that I've made, whether that be tidying up the Barbies that I've decided I didn't want to play with anymore, or helping me get out of my... <laughs> get my car out of a space I'd got stuck in. <laughs> you are the person I trust most in this world, having someone by my side through ups and downs, bad breakups, babies, day-to-day -day struggles is something I feel blessed to have. You make me a better version of me. She's the most incredible wedding cake, I'm sure you'll all agree when it comes out. Um, thank you, Beth, for helping me with all of this. You are the most special person, and I will always feel so lucky for our bond. <laughs> You are the kindest, most generous soul, and I will always be your number one fan and supporter. I love you always. <laughs> oh, sorry. To my bridesmaids, thank you for putting up with me and my endless drama, for being the people I rely to ground me and tell me I'm being a drama queen, but mostly for helping me grow into the one woman I am. I love you all so much. Thank you for being behind me, not just today, but always. To Katie, for 20 years of being your best friend, from starting off as teens and growing into mothers together, for raising our girls to be exactly like us and to value their friendship as much as we value ours. You have been the most consistent relationship I've ever had, through relationship breakdowns to mental ones and all of it in between. I couldn't ask for a better friend than you. Thank you for always picking up me and my checkbook. And, and Adam up off the floor when he needed you. <laughs> Here's to 20 more, my Milner. To Chloe, 
for your emotion, support and stability always created for me. To the person who loves my daughter just as much as me. You are the yin to my yang, the other half of my coin and the person whose opinion I and guidance I value most. My favourite memories are those years we had, just us, living our best lives. I'm so thankful for our special times we had together. They'll last a lifetime. To Rhea. Sorry. <laughs> Ooh. For sticking by me through every moment, for never failing to know what to say, and always making me feel like your family. That distance and busy lives never change true friendship, but mostly for having the most caring and loving heart. The four best friends I could ever ask for, the best godmothers to our girl, and the best people you will ever meet. I'm truly blessed to have people who love me no matter what, and through my many flaws. To my new mother and father-in-law for welcoming me into the family like I was a piece of the puzzle that had always been missing. You raised an incredible man and for that I'll forever be thankful. I promise to love him with all that I am, tell him when he's wrong, and if he doesn't listen to, call you and you can tell him. <laughs> to our beautiful girl, Everly, we are so proud of you. You did an amazing job today, and what a gorgeous little princess you looked. Mummy and Daddy love you endless amounts. She really appreciated that, didn't she? <laughs> cool. <laughs> Um, <laughs> to my nan and pops, who prove what love and marriage truly mean, through good and bad till the very end, over 50 years of marriage, you are what we will continue to strive for. I love you both. Yay. I'm wrapping up now, I promise. And finally, I'd like to tell you about my husband, because beyond the squats, the muscles, the stone bashing and the arsenal loving, he is one in a million. I knew he was special from the very first time I spoke to him. I'll take you back to 2015. Now you've heard this story because he's already said it, but um, I was going through a bit of a life crisis. We all have them. Um, it was a phase, shall I say, and I was having a spell of bad dates uh, and disastrous Tinder experiences. My best pal, Chloe, dared me to be brave and start talking to this fit guy I'd seen on my people who you might know on Facebook. And I remember thinking, oh, he's a bit of me. <laughs> we did the whole, do I know you game, and I threw some innuendos out for good measure. I told, him, <laughs> I told him he looked like he could handle a good piece of stone, but it felt different this time. It felt exciting, and he made me laugh, not like I'd ever laughed before. His innocence in his stories, but the stupidity that came with it. He still does that now, with his, it could only happen to Adam stories. For example, when the subdeem caught him deep throating a broom handle. <laughs> they did look quite surprised when I turned up to the marriage meeting. <laughs> we, went on, we went on our first date. He picked me up in his C4. Great impression that was. I remember climbing in the Clark car, looking over to him and thinking, oh shit, he's massive. <laughs> his outfit was picked out by Saz and we went to the Five Bells at Basingham. During the drive, he killed a pigeon, which cut the tension of a first date. We spoke the whole night about our family, and especially how much I love my nan and pops. I would say it was practically love at first sight from that moment onwards. We made some memories, found new areas of the cathedral to explore. <laughs> we went on some very scenic bike rides, and for those who know me, no, I can't ride a bike. But <laughs> forward a year and we found out we had little Evs on the way. That's when you showed me who you truly were. The best dad anyone could have for their child. You make me fall deeper in love with you and with how much you love her. You're the kindest man I've ever known and you have the kindest smile and heart. You make me cry with laughter and after seven years of your atomisms, you never make me laugh and angry and all in one go. I didn't know those two emotions went hand in hand. I cannot wait to grow old with you, to care for each other. Wipe each other's bums when we're old, or when you've had too many vodkas. <laughs> you made me believe that good men exist, and you have set a precedent for anyone who wants to marry Everly. I love that we have our own sayings, love you sometimes, because sometimes you don't feel like saying it, but it's always there. Medium sorry, because we are both equally stubborn, 
and I don't want to commit to a full sorry, but also don't want the argument to, gra to drag on. You always know how to love me, whether it be holding off on a hug because you know I'm not ready for it, or it's just buying me a fruit and nut bar because you know they're my favourite. Thank you for working so hard so we could all enjoy this amazing day. Our love is special because there's no love like ours. My darling Adam, the most kindest, generous man I've ever met. Forever mine, forever ours, and forever yours. Your wife. To Adam. Is it on? Testing. Can everyone hear me? I can't wait. It's too. I'm sorry. I can't. I've got to get this out now. Go. Right, hello everyone. For those of you that don't know, I'm... Can you hear me properly? Yeah. I'm Lauren's bridesmaid, Katie. Um, I have changed my speech this morning because a lot of it really wasn't appropriate for today. Um, and I felt like if it had been her birthday, I probably would have said a lot more, but it's not, it's a wedding, so I can't really say any more on that. Um, so firstly, I would like to begin by saying how beautiful my best friend looks today. Um, yeah. And Adam, I suppose you look okay too. <laughs> Um, secondly, I would like to say thank you for creating such a beautiful day. It's an absolute pleasure to be here celebrating with you, and I'm sure you'll all agree with that. Um, you should both be very proud, so thank you for that. <laughs> um, so now the bit I've been waiting for. Um, <laughs> Lauren, where do I even begin? I don't really remember our first encounter as friends because I feel like you've been in my life forever. I mean, 21 years is basically forever, isn't it? But you said 20, or did you say 21? Or have I got that wrong? OK, that's fine then. We'll continue with that. 21 years of friendship is basically forever. Um, so taking it right back to our teenage years, when we would spend our entire weekends together, from the moment we stepped out of school on the Friday to Sunday evening, we would normally start the Friday at your house, go to the common, go to Beaton Park. Um, <laughs> and then on the Saturday, we would go to my parents' house. And then we would prank call people, bake cakes, play on The Sims, you know, all the usual teenage stuff. <laughs> um, and then we moved on to the years we spent drinking in the Vic, and then obviously town. Um, those were some of the best days of our life, and I would go into detail, but most are not appropriate for today. Um, so the next chapter has been my favorite by far, babies and marriage. So I'm so happy that I got to stand by your side today, just like you did on my wedding day. Adam really is your soulmate. I know I was skeptical at first. <laughs> Can you blame me? <laughs> but it soon became clear that you two were meant to be. So thank you, Adam, for making my best friend the happiest she has ever been. Um, it's the greatest gift being your friend. And not only that, but being part of Everly's life, just like you are half an hour. She's, I'm not a crier and I'm crying. <laughs> um, our story started with the funny memories together and we still have no, those, but now they involve our families. And this is everything we ever dreamed of as teenagers. And I count my blessings every day to have you in my life. Um, so I'm going to round it up now. I would just like to say a massive congratulations to the new Mr and Mrs Wilcoxon. You can all raise a glass. Yes. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Thank well, you. Nothing, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah.